I believe struggle is um, universal to everyone. And uh, the struggle that I share with uh, some of my peers is the struggle of the mental health system and going to the hospital and uh, psychosis. Um, I, would, I would say psychosis is my biggest struggle that I've ever faced. Um, it was beautiful, but it was definitely um, it was definitely a journey, the biggest journey I've ever had. Um, I was journeying through the mind of what it meant to have like grandiose thoughts of like being part of the universe, and uh, it wasn't a uh, it wasn't like I had some ego to think like I was more important than everyone. It was that we were all enlightened and we were all like uh, God, so we were all connected. But it was really strange because I did feel like I had a lot of pressure on my. Uh, on my shoulders to like do good or to like know the answer to like how life was created or like how uh, what it meant to be human in the world. I remember going onto the hill um, one night and uh, seeing all the stars and the stars represented people that I knew and so they were all looking down at me and uh, just asking me like what are you gonna do now like you know you're, you're alive like and there I cried with passion that I, I can experience love and passion and these amazing feelings um, I learned that that's very possible it, because sometimes I walk around on the in this day-to-day -day, uh, life and I'm not filled with passion I'm not filled with a uh, with a uh, you know opportunity to feel to feel something uh, poetically or, or magnificently um, and it feels like just day-to-day -day mundane life but I know that psychosis and I know that the mind can expand to, uh, to feel, to feel um, alive and to feel even bliss or even sadness. After all was said and done, I was still living as a human. I never turned into a bird or to like a, a dog or, or anything. So there is something that's uh, stable and physical. I'm almost like in this physical shell. And that sort of um, represents uh, just as much as the mind, the physical world, because I sifted through the mind and I still wound up the same thing that I was like last year and the year before, just a physical human body. And it's really kind of strange to sift through like the possibilities of who you are, but after after all those delusions, or, or they don't have to be delusions, but after rediscovering yourself, you're still going to be in this vessel. Maybe when you die, you, you transform into something else, but I never truly died. I died in, in a metaphor, but uh, after sifting through those pieces of identity, I'm still just the same person I was before the psychosis. Um, still had my family uh, as part of the sifting, the, the big stones that were still there after um, all the different possibilities. My family was still there, present. My friends were still there, present. The day-to-day -day is a lot different than, than, than it was in the monologue. Now I work with, uh, with other people who have been through similar, similar uh, stories, and a lot of it is sharing, sharing those stories openly and uh, addressing what is a similar thread 
and how can we be healthy together? Um, how can we bring bring our stories together? That's why the ESA Leadership Council is so remarkable, and and peers peers are remarkable too, um, because it's not we're not in the closet anymore. We're not we're not sh like sh uh, sheltering ourselves. We're open and we're we're back back out in the world. Um, and the monologue it could be. It can be challenging to, to express yourself when you're in the monologue state. Um, part of the struggle was going, was committing a uh, committing burglary, and I was I was uh, I experienced the the justice system through the psychiatric security review board. I might get a discharge this year because my team in ESA or ESA is the Early Assessment and Support Alliance, and my employment here at PSU as a research assistant for mental health and all the work that I've been doing to like. Um, to to advocate for youth that have lost their minds pretty much and uh, been able to recover and share their stories with other people uh, I feel like uh, the, the board sees that and so they might give me an early discharge I first had psychosis, um, I didn't have much of a fear of things. I was pretty ready to uh, work with the new mind that I had in terms of information and ability. And one of the things that helped me get through a lot of the thought process was using words, <clears throat> root words. And you can take a root word from English and put it into English slang, or you can derive it from Hebrew, Arabic, you know, Egyptian, Sumerian, Chinese, all these ancient languages, Anglo-Saxon. The way that I uh, imagine the world is there's the pragmatic realism and then there's the more me uh, metaphysical, imaginary, or you know, you know, the magical side of life, and both of them are working at one at, at the same time. You know, to rationalize what I'm doing, I get a uh, an ima a, a imaginary friend in my mind speaking at all times and conversing with other imaginary friends 
to uh, to find answers. And they say, you know, the way the world's set up, we we eat, we sleep, we talk, we communicate. Uh, sometimes we don't communicate. Sometimes we don't eat, and some people don't sleep as often. Maybe everything's just a dream and people can live their own dream. This woman once told me uh, that when I was hanging out with her at my dad's concert, she said part of her thing is living in the silence or disconnect or disconnection. So learning to be okay with not having as much mind. I don't get picture memories, I, I get dialogues. Um, I love talking to like imaginary, like I, uh, um, Michael the Leprechaun, who's this, this guy, I, I, one of my only flashbulbs I had going through the, um, going through my more uh, tenser days of psychosis was this he, he looked kind of like a leprechaun, but he was like a preacher staying in a church. And I had this dream. My dreams are very vivid. I don't get the picture memories during the day, but I have vivid dreams. And he always sends me a pretty direct answer to questions. I could say, hey, Michael, what's the answer to life? He goes, do whatever you want. And then, you know, Wiz Khalifa, the rapper, goes, don't do whatever you want. And then currency says, you should talk with, you know, I get, I get these relaying conversations mm -hmm. with imagine, you know, and it's mm -hmm. tons of fun to go through those. Because anytime you have any kind of, you're making any kind of decision yeah. or thinking about any kind of, like, question, there's always multiple perspectives on that question. And everybody holds that in their <clears throat> minds. Like, every single person. But I think, like, when you've gone through psychosis, they become, like, kind of individual parts of yourself or individual voices or individual characters. So it gets really interesting because it's more concrete and not so like just a thought process. Yeah, the way I look at it is they're imaginary friends to rationalize it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I don't really want to rationalize it because I want to leave it magical and be disconnected and experience my own path. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you rationalize it and name it so that other people can understand I it do, better? I do, yeah. But you're physical and emotional and intellectual experience of it doesn't have labels. No. It's completely mm -hmm. a ponder. Like yeah. when Lil Wayne says in his song, he says, he says instead of, he says like, imagine that, if you can't, then ponder, you know. So it's kind of like, if your mind doesn't have anything, learn to work with what you have to get an answer. And you know, it kind of brings up the stigma of answers. Do we really need answers? Can we be disconnected? And I believe that, you know, if there is a God that he can help direct us into the right path, or if there are imaginary or, or you know, voices that, you're, that, that live inside your imagination that you've manifested as real to you, you can use those voices to, you know, to get answers to help other people.
it was very like almost soul crushing to go in there and I like did everything I that they said you know I took the meds but it's like anytime you are symptomatic you know it's like half the nurses were really great and half the nurses were like terrible you know I got yelled at I got like chastised other nurses would actually try to like sit down and talk to me which was good but it's like I didn't really know what to expect sometimes we were kind of treated like children I you know was sitting in the dining area with another patient and they told us to go back to bed but we were like we're both kind of having manic episodes right now and can't really sleep right now unless you want to give us some Ativan to, you know we can't really sleep what do you want us to do like sit in our room and stare at the wall <laughs> and I was you know every like I was put on Haldol and then Zyprexa and then Depakote and I said I don't like the Zyprexa and it was really weird I was sensitive to color so sometimes the pills were blue and sometimes they were yellow and when they were yellow I was like I feel like these are making more manic the nurses were like that's impossible and just kept giving me the pills even though it was like causing me all this distress so I don't know why they didn't like suggest me closing my eyes when I took the medication or, or I don't know candy coating it <laughs> or something told them, they just told me the names and I was like, I want the medication information, I want to know what the side effects are and I want to know if like stuff I'm experiencing is from the medication and they never did because I guess they thought that it would cause some like psychological effect where you're reading this and then you mm -hmm. think that you have it and you're being like a hypochondriac or something. In some ways the hospital made me crazier because it's like you can't go outside, there's like nothing to do, two TVs, two little exercise machines, and then you can color. I colored so much. It was, it was terrible. <laughs> you know, I spent three weeks in the hospital. I didn't go outside. Like, that would drive anyone crazy. first manic and I didn't really understand what it was I you know kind of did some research and told my psychiatrist I think I have bipolar disorder I think you know I've been having a manic episode um, I think it was sort of misinterpreted because I was like oh my anxiety is getting better so I think the medication is working and then I'm saying this and she was kind of like not really trusting what I was saying, I think. But yeah, and then like after I did finally get the diagnosis, I really tried to learn more about it and kind of like explore what that meant for me and kind of like learning not to blame myself so much. I had depression for like so many years before getting this diagnosis and kind of like learning it wasn't my fault and like how to cope with that. I think my mom didn't really understand what having a mental illness meant. So as I was kind of learning more, I had to explain, you know, I'm not doing this because I don't, you know, like I don't want to do something. It's because like I feel this way and it's causing me to act this way and I can't really help these feelings that I'm having. So, you know, I'm going to try to do what I can and that, you know, resulted in me like kind of taking over my own treatment um, and deciding more what to do for myself. I had my mom stop coming to my appointments because I felt like she was talking over me and you know I that allowed me to like choose what to say to her and I think the more we talk about it the more like sympathy and empathy there is there. My, like, all of the drive I had to, like, research 
my disorder and learn more about it kind of made me realize that I was passionate about psychology and that like through my experiences I didn't want anyone else to go through the same thing I had gone through so I decided on psychology and even though I didn't really know at the time where I wanted to go with it it seemed like a step in the right direction and uh, through working with an occupational therapist at ESA I decided that was what I wanted to do because it seemed really effective and it felt like I could make a difference that way in the way that I wanted to. If you're an occupational therapist and you're working out in the community like you're there and you can see the progress and you can like make suggestions or help them and you know for sure if you're making an improvement or not it's not just based on what they say to you. I thought that like peer support was a good way to kind of work towards that because you know you also have that hands-on aspect and you know it, I'm working with people who are in my situation and I get to come from that place of empathy rather than having that like client practitioner relationship and you know being on the same level and it's like when I become an occupational therapist I want to continue to do that and use those skills because I think that more people with lived experience should be in the field. It's just so much more like you know, it's such a relief to know that the person you're working with knows what you're going through. Like, when I had a therapist who didn't have any mental health issues, it was like, so disconnected. It's like I couldn't relate with him. And then I met someone who had been through the same things as me. She doesn't have bipolar disorder, but, you know, dealt with depression, dealt with an abusive relationship. And so we were really able to connect. And it's like every story I had, she had a story. and. It's very healing that way, when you know someone really knows what you've been through. The word recovery is a bit prob problematic, it's true. The reason is that it suggests that the monologue of insanity or of abstract thought or of a different reality. It suggests that that's an illness. Um, now that's a huge, that's a profound statement to suggest that it's not an illness, um, that it's not something to recover from, but it's something to utilize. The word recovery, I don't know if it's recovery so much as it is uh, a uh, transfer or a, uh, a, uh, a, a, yeah, transfer. Transfer from one account of who you are to another account of who you are. Um, both of them are, are, are brilliant. Both of them are good. Um, so I never recovered. I never, I never, I never did recover. Um, I just changed, changed uh, states of mind.